Wait a minute, and she's told three stories, a lot to get to here. And by the way, we have somebody inside that courtroom, so when we get uh, some more information, we'll let you know the defense wants the case thrown out. So there's our first question. Back with us, Susan Hendricks, mm -hmm. Kira Phillips on this one. And we're also going to delve into the legal mind of Jeff Gold. The studious as ever, he just had the glasses on, so you know he's serious about this one. <laughs> what are the odds, my friend, this one gets chucked out of court? Um, the, the blindfold? The whole case, the defense wants well, it out of there. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the big question is whether, you know, they've challenged the idea that this blindfold should come in because the prosecutor withheld uh, the evidence, uh, didn't tell the defense that they had uh, found this blindfold, uh, didn't uh, uh, probably present it to the grand jury, which indicted. So that's their theory. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to win that motion. But that's what they're saying. You didn't tell us and you didn't tell the grand jury. Okay. Uh, Jeff, I Jump have a quick in, question here. If you're the prosecution, uh, word is that they're saying, look, she had a chance to walk away. She didn't have to push him off the cliff with both yeah. of her hands. But then if you bring the blindfold in and say, no, it was premeditation, that goes against your first theory. Could that confuse the jury? Well, yeah, I mean, this girl is given multiple stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what that's what her problem is. At, at, at first, she, you know, they, they, she made up an email thing trying to say to everybody that apparently, uh, you know, he went on a hike with somebody else. And then later she said, all right, yeah, I, I was with him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, we had an argument. And now you have this evidence from the prosecutor that would seem to indicate uh, some form of premeditation uh, mm -hmm. if there was a blindfold. So there's a lot of stories out there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what, which one will get to, to court, we'll see. But the prosecutor Here, is pretty serious. Let's go all the way back to their wedding and how friends came forward and said you should have seen her at the wedding they're in the middle of their vows and she's like <laughs> you know looking, looking off, down that's looking right. down totally not involved not into it I mean there's all kinds of strange things leading up to the wedding at the wedding ceremony afterwards I mean this was just within an, a, a week period this right. all happened Steve do we have that I think we have a friend talking about just the that just didn't feel right that she cried we at the it? wedding but okay. not at the funeral no exactly she's looking down wasn't into it at yeah. all which is not what you expect when you're reading vows here it is let's listen to the friend during the wedding when they were exchanging vows um, Jordan was looking down and wasn't looking at Cody when she was exchanging vows um, it, to me that's odd yeah very odd and let's get back to the three different stories Jeff alluded to them. let's lay them all out there and these are the three different stories from Jordan Graham herself number one is husband texts her and she comes driving up and she says she sees him driving off with friends there's number one mm -hmm. number two she just happens to find his body at the bottom of the cliff and the park rangers going huh that's kind of strange and then number three is the one they're working off of for the most part now is that they have this argument he grabs the arm she shoves him but then, then again one thing and Jeff I'll start with you and, and uh, Susan Kerr jump in as well you push him over face first isn't that, uh, that forget the blindfold for a second but the if you're shoving someone and the cliff is there and you know where the cliff is face first huh well, let me tell you something. First, Mike, there was one more fact which she couldn't avoid, that she had texted a friend back and forth right before this happened and said to the friend, hey, if you don't hear from me, something happened to me. So she knew. That's the, the prosecutor's intent right there. She knew there was going to be some form of altercation. What she was doing with a blindfold, I don't know, pin the tail on the donkey at the top of the cliff? I don't know. But it certainly is part of the case that she did something to him on purpose. Do you think that the text was sent so she could protect herself and have an alibi that he's dangerous and if something happens, um, something wrong happened on that cliff? Is it, was it to set up an alibi for her? Hey, you know, that could be. That's a good point. It could be. Um, and then she just left him there for eight days. And when nobody else, you know, came by, eventually she had the telltale heart and figured somebody better find him. Uh, so, right, she could have done all this to, to set it up. But, I, you know, we just don't know. There you go. And, and also the fact, do they even have an argument? That's just coming from her as well. So we're going to continue to follow it. Jeff, st uh, stick around here again. We've got somebody inside that courtroom. So if we get any information.